Hi, uh, this is Flug, and I wanted to make this video to show you a few things about uh, how Bombable works. And we're basically going to step through all the different options for Bombable and kind of explain how they work. And then we'll, we're going to take off and uh, kind of show you how they work in real life. And we're probably going to get totally, um, you know, shot out of the sky by some enemy aircraft here. So. Uh, but I'm the uh, main developer, and so far pretty much the only developer for the bombable add-on for flight gear. So one thing I'm going to do is just uh, try to explain like what bombable is, what it does, and why, uh, like some of the little quirks or different ways it works, what, why why it does that. So the first thing, anytime once it, once you've got bombable installed. Um, you uh, are going to want to check into this bombable menu uh, pretty often and look at the bombable options. Just for example, right now for some reason I've been attacked by uh, like a Fokker because uh, uh, I started with this scenario and he's attacked me and um, started me on fire. So if I wanted to uh, reset that damage because I actually meant to put it on pause before I started the video here, I just click that um, reset damage button and we reset our damage to zero. And then I'm going to put on pause, and then maybe he will stop attacking for a while. But you can see you can do several things here. You can reset your damage. You can reset the um, AI object's damage. So like if you've been fighting a bunch of aircraft and shot them all down um, or damaged them, you could reset the damage to zero. You can also uh, respawn the AI aircraft, <coughs> which is a very useful thing to do because um, as you can see when you get the uh, bombable package and install it there's a whole bunch of scenarios that it comes with but there's still like there's one scenario that has you uh, fighting uh, different World War One aircraft around Marin County California but like if you wanted to fight your World War One aircraft in England or in France or in Germany or whatever we don't have a scenario for that well using this respawn AI aircraft button you can take your scenario wherever you want so you just load the uh, Marin County uh, camel scenario but you um, uh, load yourself into say the London England uh, uh, aerodrome if you're going to be World War one compatible uh, so load it into whatever whatever airport you want to and then once you get there just hit this respawn AI aircraft button and then those aircraft will uh, uh, show up real close to where you are and they'll start attacking you there's a different button to respawn the AI the ground craft or the watercraft uh, sometimes it's convenient to do those separately but like if you're doing a bombing mission with tanks um, you can load that scenario and then go to wherever you want to bomb the tanks maybe go to the Grand Canyon respawn the tanks and the tanks will be with you in the Grand Canyon and you can go and bomb them so that way one scenario like if you have a tank scenario you only need one not 500 for every different part of the world because you can just respawn them where wherever you are so that's what those buttons are and they're also useful like if you uh, load up with three uh, World War One aircraft like I've just done um, once you got busy and shot them all down then you can just hit the respawn button and you'll have three more aircraft and you can just uh, play flight gear all day long instead of working or whatever so um, this uh, button right here is just the master enable or disable for the whole bombable package so if, if you are getting tired of it or you don't like the smoke or you don't like the you know, you're just flying around in your Cessna and you uh, don't like all the um, World War II aircraft coming in attacking you, just click here and suddenly all that will be turned off and, and you won't have any more bombable at all. Um, the three uh, select boxes here are ones you use quite a bit. And these basically set how difficult it is for you as a pilot and, and how good the AI uh, pilots and, and uh, drivers and stuff are. So the top one is your weapon realism and, and this basically boils down to if you shoot at something how easy is it to hit. 
um, if you pick dead easy, if you just get anywhere, you know, within a football field of that thing, it's going to register a hit. And, and honestly, if you're new to this, um, I would suggest putting it on dead easy for a while because it's very, very frustrating to like try to line up behind um, like another camel as you're flying through the air. The, those are not easy to hit. And so uh, put it on easy for a while till you're getting hits and then gradually move it up to easier and so on. I, I'm pretty convinced. Um, even though I've labeled it as ultra realistic, ultra realistic is probably what I think is close to real life, <laughs> because you can put a lot of bullets in the general direction of, of say, like a sop with a camel, before you actually, you know, before you actually do any actual damage. Yeah, you can't just like shoot a bunch of bullets within 20 feet of the camel and expect them to do anything and even if they're hitting like out on the wings you're not really doing any damage it's just whistling through fabric and so on unless you get a real lucky hit uh, and hit maybe one of the guy wires or something but which is uh, taken into consideration in the ultra realistic level I mean once in a while when you're hitting out on the end of the wing it will hit something vital and you'll get a, a real uh, damaging hit but uh, most of the time an ultra realistic to get really damaging hits, you have to hit right in the core of your target where you're going to actually do damage to the engine, the controls, or I guess the pilot. But anyway, the, uh, if you put it on ultra realistic, you're not going to be getting very many hits because it's pretty darn hard. So um, avoid frustration by starting on the easier level. And, and normal is, you know, pretty good. But I think actually everybody in flight gear talks about we want it to be like real life well if you want it to be right like real life put it on ultra realistic and then also expect to be frustrated a lot <clears throat> the uh, next one here the ai weapon effectiveness um, basically uh, determines how easy it is for the ai uh, pilots to hit you how, so how good they are at shooting so um, there again, if you want to be really frustrated, put it on, you know, very effective shots and they'll just blast you out of the sky. If, if you don't like it so much, make them, you know, less effective. And if you don't like to be shot at all, that's where you can just put it on disabled. But I, you know, uh, what, what I usually put uh, for myself, which is quite challenging, is normal for mine and more effective for theirs, the AI. And then there's also another setting here which has to do with how good a pilot the AI aircraft are. And here again, you know, if I were starting, here's where I would put it. Uh, you know, I'd make them very bad shots. I'd make it really easy for me to hit. I'd make them very unskilled pilots so they'll just, they won't quite fly in straight lines, but, you know, they're like a, a rookie pilots on a, says and there's something that's basically just flying in sort of a straight line or very slow turns so they're going to be easy to catch up with if you want super easy you can even turn off their uh, uh, maneuvering and then they'll just fly in a straight line and then that's actually good at first too if you don't know how to catch them but um, usually myself I put it on something like uh, this which is challenging but you know not too challenging. So let me just go through these other settings real quickly. Uh, most of these you don't need to mess with, but if you want to know, here's what they're for. The multiplayer, um, you can do bombable over multiplayer. It works really well. We've, we've had a lot of fun with it. Um, but if like people are pestering you or shooting you down when you don't want to be, just uh, turn it off right there. I usually leave it on all the time. Uh, and it only works obviously if you're connected to a multiplayer server and so on so if you're not you can just leave it on most of the time and you won't even notice it um, the excessive acceleration and speed warnings um, a lot of this stuff the, the next few um, as soon as I started putting together this package where you're fighting other planes you're uh, dogfighting against other planes it soon became apparent that you had to have some way to account for acceleration and overspeed and uh, and it had to be fair among the different planes and you couldn't because the way flight gear is set up a lot of times at first I mean you can just get in a plane and just yank the stick back as hard as you want and, and you're hitting 23 G's or whatever there's no damage shown on the plane you don't necessarily black out or anything 
And the other pie, let's say, is uh, using Bombable with these settings where you black out at 4 Gs and your aircraft starts recording damage at 4.5 Gs or whatever. Uh, that's going to be a very unfair fight. So you have to have some way to equalize uh, the uh, acceleration damage and speed damage. And so Bombable does that for at least some aircraft. So it makes it a fair fight between the different pilots. So uh, that's what th this uh, checkbox here uh, will give you warnings when you're getting close to those points and so that helps you to judge you know how hard can you actually pull the stick back before you're going to damage the airplane um, I'd say it's not totally realistic uh, because like your sop with camel is not going to flash up a uh, thing in front of your face if you're flying an authentic one that says about to damage the aircraft but on the other hand I bet you you know if you were flying a real top with camel and you were starting to put too many G's on it you you probably have some way of getting a warning like you'd hear the wings starting to crack or something so that's our way of, of at least giving you some warning and then the next one is that excessive acceleration and speed actually damages the aircraft and that's what I was just talking about if if we have that embalmable and if both pilots have this being checked then they'll both be on an equal turf when it comes to flying if it's not checked you'll have one person just being able to just do insanely uh, impossible maneuvers and uh, the fight won't be fair so uh, if you want to have a fair fight check that L leave it checked um, the weapon impact flak that's uh, this next checkbox uh, and that's when uh, you shoot at another plane and you see like a black um, kind of a little explosion whenever you get a hit on the other aircraft or on the tank or whatever so that's a really good visual indication otherwise you're shooting away and you never know if you hit or not so th that's uh, what it is uh, if you don't like it you can just turn it off um, the AI weapon fire visual effect that's when you can see those white bullets coming at you from the AI aircraft or tanks or whatever so you can turn that on or off there um, you can turn off and on the fires and explosions here uh, the jet contrails the smoke trails the piston engine and um, the damaged engine so those can all be turned off and on here now it's interesting the, the reason I put those different contrails and smoke trails and stuff in like I don't know if it's totally realistic like when we're doing a fight here which we're going to do in a minute with our spad and our Fokker and our uh, camel and so on <clears throat> um, we're going to have these smoke trails following the planes around the sky uh, which if you ever watch some authentic aircraft they do leave at least a little bit of a smoke trail that the camels use this kind of uh, uh, oil linseed oil or something that they would put it through the engine and it didn't have an oil reserve or anything it just came right in sprayed right out the exhaust so it was leaving this huge trail of oil <laughs> everywhere it went and uh, which of course turned into kind of light smoky stuff so it, it does leave something of a smoke trail especially in certain situations but but the actual reason I put it in the flight gear is at first I didn't have those smoke trails and if you want to experience that, go and turn turn off all these uh, smoke trails um, and fly at one time and just try to find the other aircraft and, and you can't see them. So the smoke trails just make it realistically possible for you in flight gear to actually f locate <laughs> your enemy, which is kind of important if you're going to fight them. Flares right down here is the same thing like when I put the tanks in place or jeeps or whatever I found out I would put them so cleverly in the landscape and then I, I couldn't see them. I'd never find them. Uh, so uh, when you put the flare on they all put a flare and then you can find them so uh, it's kind of fake but uh, it's also not much fun to go on a bombing run for uh, tanks if you can't find them uh, so again if you, if you want to be a pro you know you use all the flares and stuff uh, in the beginning and then if you want a real challenge turn them all off and believe me like a tank uh, just hidden in the general landscape somewhere uh, especially if it's uh, the camo color it's not so easy to see if they don't have that flare on um, the AI ground detection um, is the thing that keeps the planes from like hitting the ground and crashing and the tanks uh, like driving along the ground instead of like 50 feet in the air or whatever so 
Uh, normally you can just leave that on but you do have the option to turn it off it does have a bit of a frame rate hit so if you're mostly just like flying airplanes high in the sky not near the ground you could turn it off if you were that picky um, the debug messages this last one uh, normally you can just leave that off and it's off by default unless you're trying to track down a bug for me or something so but I've been tracking down a bug so I'm leaving it on so that's our menu uh, the other thing you should know in the bombable menu is there are statistics. I haven't shot anything here yet, but it tells you, you know, how many bullets you've shot, how many things you've hit, how many were damaging versus just hit the ground or whatever. So that's kind of fun to check, and it was a user request to have these statistics. Uh, the one little detail there is note that rounds which do not impact the terrain or an AI object are not recorded and that actually happens quite a bit the, the way uh, flight gear works with the projectiles is it shoots and they go for a certain number of seconds and if at the end of that number of seconds it hasn't hit the ground or the some other object they just kind of disappear uh, and it's always a trade-off like when you're setting up the um, guns in your aircraft you know how fast can you make the rate of firing uh, which obviously makes it realistic or not realistic um, because if you have to slow it down too much it's not very realistic most of these machine guns have a tremendous rate of fire uh, but uh, if you get so many projectiles out there I mean hundreds and hundreds of them uh, and if they're all uh, you know hanging on for 35 seconds um, you have a real frame rate hit and after I don't know, five or ten seconds, they're not really effective. <laughs> it's like a, sort of a piece of lead tumbling through the air, you know, softly. That's not anything that's going to make any damage. So normally you set a timeout for them, and after five seconds or so, they just disappear. So you might shoot 400 rounds out of each uh, gun here and only see maybe 200 impacts when you get done. And that's why. So, we're going to start up the engines here. We turn on our two, uh, I can never remember what those babies are called, but we turn them on. We start the engine, well we unpause, that's always helpful. Uh, I like to turn up the heads up display and zoom out, and you can see we're already tail lifting off the ground, so that's when we have to plug a little vibrator. And someone's attacking us already. So we've got three uh, aircraft attacking. And they're probably going to attack us since you've established over here, but we'll give it a try. Now, here's where we see something. Uh, camel pilots would almost invariably turn left as soon as they take off. And um, the camel is weighted to the rear. If I let off the it rises like that, and also when I turn left, it has a natural rise of the nose because of the uh, gyroscopic effect of the propeller and engine, which is a this rotary engine that's very heavy and has a huge gyroscopic effect. So a lot of camel pilots would take off, turn left, and uh, at that moment they would have to adjust their uh, uh, throttle and all this stuff, and so they get distracted and crash almost immediately. So, not good. But uh, you can practice that if you take off and just let that nose rise or make your left turn. You will soon be stalling and spinning into the ground and you'll feel exactly like hundreds of, of World War I camel pilots who died that way. So, that's realistic. So, uh, this scenario happens to have three uh, aircraft. So you can see as soon as I line up uh, to shoot one, another one gets on my tail and shoots me. So uh, that brings up, you know, the first rule of the World War I uh, air pilots was never fly straight. So if you do, you can guarantee someone's going to get on your tail and shoot you. But if you don't fly straight, it's real hard to hit uh, any of your enemies. But this brings up the other thing I like to do is uh, use the map, you turn on the traffic, and uh, then you can see where the other aircraft are. And you know, it's not totally realistic, like they didn't have a magic map back in World War One that were 
kind of like a radar screen, but um, sure makes it a lot easier to find the people you're trying to uh, attack. So uh, if you do crash, the easiest way to restart is uh, just you know reset with Control uh, Shift Escape. So now I'm back on the runway, restarting, zooming out. So we can see I get a little right rudder just to keep centered on the runway. Yeah, and that's an annoying thing when you restart, even though your throttle was on full, it goes down to low. To kind of jiggle it to get back. So now I'm trying to put this little left, little right rudder, just to keep it centered. And then I lift off. And that's basically how a takeoff is supposed to go now. This is not how it's supposed to go. We've got the camel on our tail. The shooting misses are taking off. So here again, the left turn. I have to be careful, see my nose rising as if I'm not really attentive. And uh, you would spin right into the ground. So I'm going to get my map going again. But yeah, and when I reset, uh, it also resets the AI. Guys, so I have all three. And as far as I, I can almost keep up with two of these guys, uh, but I certainly can't put up with three uh, they will shoot down every time if I try to uh, kind of mix it up with them. So basically what I'm trying to do with three is evade. And one thing you'll notice, the, the, when I first made the AI aircraft, uh, the AI aircraft you'll notice are, are pretty simple the way they work. They, they only do about two things. And one is they chase you and try to shoot you, and then the other thing is they evade if you're trying to shoot them, especially. Uh, so, but that's about what World War One pilots did. Uh, they they patrolled. If they saw someone, they attacked. If someone attacked them, they evaded and fought back. So, it's amazing what, with just that uh, rather simple behavior how, how uh, much they act like real pilots. But uh, the thing I found when I programmed them to do that uh, initially is, uh, as you know, they're they're getting they're gaining up on me and shooting me rather badly. So this is working out well. But um, it got tiring. Like you get in a group of three like this, and all they would do is attack, 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 and and they're very persistent. And there's only one of you and three of them, and um, so you would basically get killed every time. And especially like if you get in a pack of uh, six or seven no chance. They just all attack you all the time and never give up and uh, that's it. So um, then I made them a little bit more realistic by programming into just like you do. After a while they're going to run out of uh, maybe uh, uh, ammo so they'll have to go off and refill their ammo or maybe they run low on fuel and so they have to head for home. So if you can evade them for a while um, some of them will start to lose interest a little bit and they won't just attack, attack, attack. And so that's the, uh, kind of the strategy if you're caught in a group is you uh, evade them. After a while, some of them will uh, lose interest in just attacking you. And then you can concentrate on just one or two. So one of them has wandered off, so I'm at least going to try these two, even though they pretty well <coughs> did me in at first. Now, the other thing, um, you know, a lot of this, like, like if this were like a, a game, we would sort of enforce all these things, like, uh, you know, if you run out, if you get damaged and crash, if the restart, whatever. Uh, uh, but being flight gear, we've kind of left a lot of the realism up to you. Just for example, I always play it so that um, if you get damaged you can't just go into the bombable menu and hit um, reset damage and continue. If you get damaged you have to land and um, you know, your mechanics can come at that point. Um, whoops, see now I'm completely damaged so at least how I play you know I'm gonna try to land even though I, oh, I could probably make the runway here let's try it. But 
if I'm not near a runway, obviously you can't glide, you know, back to the runway if you're 10 miles away from it. Um, so, but I just land in a field somewhere. That's what real camel pilots would do. And then I guess my repair guys would, you know, drive out to meet me or something. But this actually worked out very nicely here. Uh, yeah, I'm even somewhat close to the center line. So that was good. And then once I'm on my uh, uh, landing strip here, um, then I can repair my damage. You can see I'm on fire pretty good. I was probably killed there, but we're not going to simulate that. Uh, and then it does enforce the reload gun. See, I never use the unlimited guns uh, unless I'm really you know, feeling unauthentic. But um, you can't reload the guns unless you're on the ground and the engine has stopped. And I'm thinking uh, I'd like some feedback. Uh, you know, I think we should maybe enforce this. You can't reset your damage either unless you're on the ground with the engine stopped. Because that would be another layer of realism. And it makes it a lot more fun. I mean, obviously, if you just go in here and just put everything on easy and put everything on unlimited guns and just repair your damage instantly, I mean, you can just blast everybody out of the sky. But if you make it more like a real mission where you're coming to the airport, um, you know, like in this case, your airport was under attack, so you have to take off under fire and you get shot down. So you come back, you repair your damage, you take off. Uh, you know, it's pretty challenging to actually kill the even the AI uh, aircraft under those conditions a and I don't know I get hours of fun out of it but um, you might be different anyway one, one little quirk of bombable is once um, you've been shot down and how it signals that you've been shot down as your engine turns off once that's happened um, you can't restart your engine what it does is it turns off the magnetos which are down here uh, that's what I couldn't remember earlier so um, to make it restart, you have to just flip your magnetos, and that brings it back to life. So it's kind of a defect there where you probably should show the magnetos flipped off since we flipped them off, but for some reason it doesn't. So you just have to toggle like one magneto off and on again, and you can start again. There again, if we were making like a World War I uh, flight game, we'd probably simulate you were shot down, your wing fell off in flames, and you jumped down in a parachute and so on, but, but being flight gear, we're just, the fact that it gave you a message and flipped off your engine is just a signal that, yep, you were shot down. Um, the other thing you'll notice is, um, right now I'm flying this historically uh, realistic camel that's made with the JSB SIM uh, FDM, uh, which I think is much more realistic uh, and more true to life the way real camels are, according to everything I've read. Uh, but you'll notice when you're fly and see they would go, if you stall them out, which I just did, they would go into a spin like this. They were notorious for not being able to get out of a spin just like we're in right now especially if you were too close to the ground and so you would end up crashing more often than not like we just did so that's realistic <laughs> um, but you'll find that the other aircraft uh, uh, that you're fighting with are not necessarily as realistic they, they do all these loops and they fly up and down and and you can't necessarily follow in the middle of light like this one we were fighting is is a camel too that should match us well the, the reason for that is I uh, when I programmed those AI bots I was program programming them to, to exactly match the Yasim camel that uh, was in flight gear at that point this is probably about version 2.6 or so and so if you get uh, if you use uh, the Yasim uh, camel that uh, comes with the bombable package it will exactly match the uh, AI camel you can follow the smoke trails up down exactly what it does but if you're flying this historically realistic camel um, it's actually much more realistic in what it can do and they can you can't do all that stuff so one of these days we're gonna get together and um, we'll make a, a 
some World War I AI aircraft that match this historically realistic um, JSP sim uh, model. But for now, uh, you just have to kind of realize that you're uh, flying against uh, enemies that are a little bit more capable than you are. They can climb a little bit faster, they can drive a little bit faster, and so on. Uh, but they also have some um, deficiencies that you can exploit. So I'll leave you to figure out what those are, but uh, you can usually uh, get them uh, once you've had a little bit of practice. And especially, like I say, your, your main strategy with these is you know, figure out where your enemies are with the map, uh, keep an eye on them, don't fly straight. <laughs> fly straight they'll get on your tail and they will shoot you down so I just wanted to invite you to uh, give bombable a try if you haven't done so it's it's an add-on to the flight gear flight simulator the download download links are in the description of this video and um, you can also try the historically accurate uh, JSB sim uh, stop with camel uh, that's a separate download. It's actually part of Bombable, but we kind of split off development on the camel to try to get it uh, nailed down. Uh, when it's done, we'll, we'll merge it back in with the Bombable package. But for now, you want to uh, download Bombable and install that, which includes several aircraft that are compatible with uh, Bombable. But then you'll also want to include the uh, JSB sim. Uh, Camel as well, because that it's a much better uh, flight dynamics model than uh, really anything we've had before in uh, flight gear as far as World War One actually uh, uh, combat ready aircraft uh, that that really fly the way those old aircraft did and have all the same sort of positives as as well as negatives, you know, they'll, they'll spin, they'll, they'll stall, they'll crash, uh, they'll, like I'm doing here, um, if you get to uh, too high speeds, it'll start to vibrate and shake and shimmy and do all this crazy stuff, but uh, that's exactly what the old real camels did. So, uh, get the bombable, and also get uh, the additional camel and give them a try and you can try them either with the AI scenarios that come with bombable which are fun and give you an idea of how it works but but really the most fun is to put them on to multiplayer and uh, uh, Hardy and I often uh, fly around the Marin County Airport at CA 35 in uh, California it's just north of KSFO where a lot of flight gear people fly so uh, it's a lot of fun, and you can, uh, if both pilots have bombable, and both pilots have like a up with camel, uh, you certainly can uh, play bombable over multiplayer. I'm just going to connect right here, and now it connected, and so we can do the uh, pilot list. And if I should happen to see, there aren't any here, but if there's someone there with a, with a camel, or with a Fokker or whatever, um, you can get together and if you both have Bombable, you can dogfight and it's actually a lot of fun. So, give it a try. Uh, it really does work. It really is a lot of fun. It really is, you know, pretty authentic and uh, gives you a whole new dimension to your uh, flight gear experience.